So, so far, I think the biggest correlate has been liquidity. Uh, there's different ways to measure liquidity, um, but you know, back in say the first half of 2022, which was terrible for most assets in general, uh, you had both the Fed and the Treasury pulling liquidity out of the financial system. And then starting late last year, you had the Treasury putting liquidity back in, um, uh, basically reducing their cash account, which is like this basically this void of cash that's not being used. And it, they're, they're, when they're uh, diminishing it, they're basically putting it back into the market. Uh, and they had to go lower than they expected because of the debt ceiling. So they had to drive it all the way down to roughly zero um, at the start of June. And so for that, for that like say roughly nine month period, uh, eight month period, you had the treasury offsetting the Fed. And so you started to get flat uh, and even slightly higher liquidity conditions uh, when you also include things like, you know, uh, Fed um, liquidity injections to the banking uh, issues in March. And so you started, to, if, you, if you map out the stock market relative liquidity, um, it follows it pretty closely. Uh, in recent months, um, I think things have gotten a little bit euphoric. The stock market's kind of gotten ahead of what you'd expect based on liquidity alone. Obviously, it's not the only variable. There's other things to consider. Um, but the, the enthusiasm around AI and tech uh, and things that are generally perceived to be recession resistant um, and that benefit from the Fed kind of getting to the top of their rate hiking cycle um, have, in, in my opinion, been somewhat overbought. There's a lot of indicators that retail type of investors are kind of aping into it to some extent. Um, and it's hard to justify some of these equity valuations when you compare it to, say, a 5% discount rate. Uh, many of them are trading at valuations that you'd normally see before back when you, you know, the alternative was like zero, one, two percent interest rates. Um, and so I am concerned around the narrow scope of the rally and the this final, um, you know, multi-month we've seen in some of these assets. Um, but I think other parts of the market are, are trading reasonably. They're doing what we'd expect uh, in the face of kind of neutral liquidity conditions. Um, and then I think as we'll talk about later, uh, there's really big forces that are stimulating the economy as well. Very large fiscal deficits that are kind of, uh, again, it's, it's sort of a case where the Treasury in some cases is offsetting some of what the Fed's doing. And some of that, I think, is, is manifest in the stock market. So far, it's been relatively neutral because the, the Treasury essentially had to blink. So when we saw this liquidity um, suck coming, so basically the, the, the Treasury was transitioning to a point where instead of drawing down, its, it's cash account is going to start refilling it, as you pointed out. And that, all else equal, would be net negative for liquidity, assuming the Fed keeps doing what they're doing. Um, the only ways around that would be that it, it, the Fed could pivot. And, and assist with some of that treasury issuance by monetizing it. And the other option is that there's the over $2 trillion uh, in reverse repos, uh, which is basically another dead pool of capital. And mostly what that represents is spillover for T-bills. So there's there's more demand for T-bills, specifically you know, like the, the short duration part of the, of the debt curve than there is. For, and so one of the risks is that um, Basically, you'd have so much demand for T-bills that you'd push the yield below the Fed's interest rate target, below the, the, the lower bound of it. And so one of the things they do to try to maintain their interest rate target is they have this reverse repo facility that is like a spillover. So if there's extra demand, they can instead go in there. And the market is made you know, over, I think the peak was like over 2.2 trillion, maybe higher usage of that facility. Um, and long duration treasuries, if they issue a lot of long duration treasuries, it won't impact that facility that'll, that'll come out of like you know uh, bank reserves um, whereas if they specifically issue a lot of t-bills um, that can suck some liquidity back out of that reverse repo facility uh, and finance it that way which is basically neutral for liquidity they're not sucking out of the banking system they're sucking out of this like void of, of reverse repos which is mostly money markets and from the money market perspective you don't really care uh, if you're holding t-bills or reverse repos they're kind of the same thing uh, from a from a end user perspective. Now, what makes it interesting is that the right now, because the yield curve is inverted, the T-bills are the most expensive part of the curve to finance on, right? So when the treasury decides what types of instruments it's going to issue to finance its deficits, it has a variety of different things to consider. How, you know, what, how's it, how's it going to get the best deal for the government? What's the lowest yield with which it can finance this? Uh, as well as taking into account things like liquidity and other, other problems like that. And so what's interesting is that they made the decision to finance it almost entirely with T-bills. Um, you know, there's a very high ratio of T-bills that they're using. So they're basically sacrificing cost. So they're, they're financing on the most expensive part of the curve uh, in order to be beneficial or at least less harmful for liquidity than if they tried to say issue a bunch of 10 years, uh, like a, a flood of 10 year uh, treasury yeah. uh, notes. And so, so far they've been effective at pulling 
a good chunk uh, out of reverse repos. I, I think we have to keep watching it because so what, what makes the data complicated is that mid June had um, you know quarterly tax payments um, that that disrupts the data for a period of time. But so far, the signs are pointing towards when you look at their issuance schedule and towards what's been happening, they've been drawing most of their issuance out of reverse repos. And as long as they're willing and able to do that, so as long as they want to keep issuing on the short, expensive part of the curve, um, basically just kind of reducing the, the uh, government's average debt duration, um, then they have basically almost $2 trillion or $1.9 trillion uh, to kind of keep pulling from without sucking out of banks. So I, I think that's that's kind of the main thing that they're going to probably try to do their best to keep drawing down uh, because that delays when the Fed, for example, has to do more quantitative easing uh, and that kind of uh, pushes away at least some of these uh, more serious liquidity issues.